Welcome. Today we are going to develop black and white film. This is a, a pretty extensive process, so if you need to pause in between some of the directions, go ahead and hit pause and uh, watch this a few times. Maybe this will help reinforce the process so that you can do it um, by memory. First of all, you've got to have a, a roll of black and white film. Um, this has actually been shot and I've retrieved the leader. Actually, um, one of the rolls didn't go all the way into the canister, so this is an easier way to get your film rolled onto a reel to get started. Um, some of the, the supplies that we're going to need today uh, includes a reel for rolling your 35 millimeter film. You're going to need a canister to actually hold the film and the reel with the chemistry. Uh, you're going to need a timer. You're going to need a graduated cylinder this graduated cylinder uh, needs to have uh, milliliters or uh, ounces. I use ounces in, uh, in my particular process. So uh, that way you can measure. You're also going to need a thermometer to measure the temperature of your chemicals. And it uh, wouldn't hurt to have <clears throat> either a safe light bag so that you can roll your film in complete darkness uh, or a completely dark closet. Uh, a dark, dark room really is necessary so that you don't expose your film to light. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to demonstrate how to roll your film um, onto a reel, but instead of using uh, film, I'm going to demonstrate using um, an ex extra roll of film, so that way you get a feel for the process. In this process, uh, we're going to put take the sprocket holes and we're going to line them up into the little pointers here, these, uh, these little notches. And so these go pretty easily into the notches. And what you need to realize is you have to roll film around the spiral in a complete circle without the film touching each other. If the film touches, then the chemicals are not going to fully develop the roll of film. Uh, one of the common uh, mistakes in developing film is the creation of blobs. Blobs are created when film is touching each other. You know, this is a common mistake, and if it, if it happens to you, um, it's not the end of the world. You just need to realize that rolling film is a very delicate process and that you need to, to develop some techniques to identify the blobs before they happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the film. With one hand, I'm going to squeeze the film ever so slightly. And then the other, other hand, I'm going to sweep back and forth with my forefinger in order to um, get the, the film, um, to feel the film to make sure it's on straight. So I'm going to start rolling it. All right. And this process is done in the complete darkness. And so the benefit of me doing this demonstration in light allows you to see the technique that I roll film. All right, so this process seems really simple, but when you're in complete darkness, um, you end up maybe having to start over. Okay, now you saw this little wrinkle right here? Well, if you, if you feel something like that, then you have to back up, all right? Usually kind of go back and forth with your film and one reason it did that is that there's a little tear right here. This little tear might skip the spiral. All right, The spiral has to be completed. Um, and so it's one of those processes that you know, gets frustrating, really frustrating, if you are really uh, wanting your film to turn out perfect. And so what I'm hoping that you'll do is just be as patient as possible and roll your film. All right, and so that it comes out without any wrinkles or kinks. Okay, so in this example, this is what it should look like. So, uh, whenever we get back, I'm going to um, show you the next step after you have your film into a canister. So, after you've rolled your film in complete darkness, then you're going to put it into a canister and then close the lid. This is a light tight lid that happens to have a light safe um, opening. Okay, so chemicals can pass through without exposing the film. Hello, 
Today we're going to develop black and white film using plastic reels. Before you got to see how a metal reel works and I want to see the contrast uh, of how a plastic reel works. If, uh, if, if you uh, are in my dark room you'll, you'll hear the word cheaters mainly because plastic reels actually are a lot easier to use than metal reels. One of the benefits of a metal reel is that they last longer, a little bit more durable, while plastic reels um, have little ball bearings that will grip your film and allow you to uh, just roll back and forth while the film is guided through a spiral. What you're going to be looking for um, is the film going in a perfect spiral without touching each other. Okay, If the film touches each other, kind of like what this looks like, then your developer will not fully develop the film and you'll end up with these nasty things called blobs. All right, so here we are. We're going to start the, re the rolling process. All right, what I'm going to do as I get ready to roll my black and white roll of film, um, I want to go ahead and get it started into the reel. So I'm going to actually trim a little edge off the tongue, the tongue of this film off. If you'll notice, this is a straight edge. I don't want the sprockets to actually be showing. Uh, that will help keep it from getting caught up into the, f the film. And then as I go ahead and, and get my film ready to roll in the dark room, the dark closet, the rolling room, I can actually get this started in daylight because you, you had to roll your film with the tongue exposed anyway and so all of the film that is, has been taken uh, as far as your photos are in the, the roll itself. So you should be fine as long as you just keep that tongue about five inches or less. Can you start your roll through the reel and get it started just like that. So just pull it in and then start going back and forth. All right, you're going to feel maybe some resistance occasionally. If you end up um, hitting a snag, you're going to have to be really patient. You might have to back it out in order for the roll to completely be in a perfect spiral. Okay, you could see how, how simple that was. Um, I was actually uh, helping it guide along by holding it down and kind of forcing it forward with my finger, okay? So if you, if you have a chance to kind of feel this, I would encourage you to practice with a practice roll. All right, once you have your film rolled up into your reel, you need to put it into a light tight canister. If you have one of these canisters, the lid needs to be secured. And then put, go ahead and put your uh, lid over the top. This is a light tight seal. Uh, liquids can come in and out, but light will not enter. So it's okay uh, once you have your film in the canister to take off the lid and turn the lights on. Alright, once you have your film safely in the canister, what it's time to do, you need to make sure that all of your chemistry is ready, okay? So what I've done is I've got some uh, tap water and I'm attempting to regulate it to 68 degrees, okay? Um, if you'll look closely, you can see that the temperature is just above 68. So what we can do is we can take some extra cold water, we can kind of add some, it will help reduce the temperature. You see how that kind of goes down a little bit? 67.8, 68. So it, it, it's kind of a balancing act when you're talking about um, trying to get exactly the right temperature of water. So go back and forth um, until you try to get as close as you can. Um, it'll it'll, it'll uh, probably vary depending on the thermometer. Different thermometers will allow for uh, slightly different temperature ratings. You'll probably want to test two or three thermometers just to make sure that it, uh, it, it's an average. Um, after you have your, your, your temperature the right temperature, you're going to have to have the right volume for your water. So right now, if you look carefully, we've got this in ounces. Um, this particular uh, volume that we need to have for um, our plastic reels is, actually hold on, nine ounces of water and about three ounces of marathon. So we're going to 
dump a little bit of, of water out of here until we have nine ounces. So kind of dump a little bit out of here. Keep on going. There we go. All right, so we've got nine ounces of water. Now we're going to take our marathon developer. Okay, this is our standard uh, film developer. And we're going to put three ounces of film developer. So three plus nine is 12 ounces. All right, so you can see exactly, um, you know, how much film developer you need. Next, next thing you're going to do is you're going to need a timer, okay? Um, in the dark room, we have several uh, enlarger timers, and those enlarger timers uh, can be set to minutes and seconds, all right? So it's important that you have the ability to count time. Um, different types of film have different time, uh, times of developing. Uh, most of the film that we have um, in our room takes about 5 minutes, 15 seconds to develop. Uh, just so happens that the roll of film we're using today was a slightly longer process, um, and so we're going to do it for eight minutes. So I'm going to set my timer over here. This is one instance where uh, your cell phones can be used. So I'm going to—I've got a, a timer here. As soon as I pour the developer, I'm going to start the timer. Or you can do a countdown if if that helps you. Sometimes. Um, you know, that makes it better sense. But here we go. After I'm going to pour this in here. I know we're kind of dripping. Ideally, you'll do this over the sink. That way. And this will provide you the ability to keep for making a mess. Okay, go ahead and start the timer. The first full minute of developing requires continuous agitation. Okay, so agitation isn't shaking it violently. It is just rolling your wrist to allow for an even exposure to the developing process. So continue for the first minute. At the end of the minute, you're going to uh, get on the counter and just tap it slightly and that will provide any bubbles that happen to be on your film to be released. Uh, we'll check again at the end of our developing process to show you the next step. All right, we've just completed our developing process um, and what we need to do is dump our developer either down the drain with some water or into a container. That way you can completely empty the container. The next step is to fill it with water. Okay, so when we get back We'll put water down uh, into the can. All right, our next step is to put water into the canister. Uh, just go ahead and fill it up. The main process that we're doing is just rinsing the film. So just fill it up until you can see the water into the canister. Put your lid on there. And you're just going to agitate this continuously for 30 seconds. All right, what you're doing is just getting all the chemicals off the film. All right, we have fixed our film for 10 minutes. After you fix your film, you uh, will recycle the fixer. We do not recycle the developer because it becomes exhausted and less reliable. However, the fixer is potent enough and strong enough that we can recycle it. So we're going to dump this with a funnel back into the fixer container. All right, after you fix it, technically it is safe to open the canister. Okay, it's kind of smelly and, and, and icky. However, uh, it is safe to expose to light. So we're going to be rinsing this for about 10 minutes. So after you get done, I always kind of do a, a quick cheat and look at the film. But after you uh, look at it briefly, then you'll have a chance to see it. So you can see here we have several photos may have uh, been exposed to light a little bit, but it looks like you have some pictures to work with. So after we rinse them uh, and hang them, we'll have a chance to make some prints. All right, what we're doing is we're just rinsing our film. 
making sure that it, it's fully rinsed for about 10 minutes. After you get it rinsed, uh, and while it's rinsing, I would go ahead and um, go ahead and wash and rinse all of your materials. Please, oh please, uh, make sure that the counters are wiped down. Make sure that all of the canisters are rinsed off, and you can leave them out um, on the canister on the on the counter to dry. Uh, probably uh, by the next day, you, you can put them back in their box so that uh, whenever it gets uh, time to use the film canisters next time, they're clean and dry, ready to use. Thanks a lot. All right, we've rinsed our film. Now it's time to dry, okay? So a lot of the film is sticky on the back. And so what we're gonna do is take some time to hand dry it until it's slick and not and, and slick and not uh, sticky. Go ahead, and turn it off. All right, we've uh, we've dried our film, and what we need to do next is cut it. All right, we have dried our film. Now it's time to cut your film into strips of five. So you'll look at your film, and you'll cut every frame until you have five and then you'll slide it into a negative carrier. I've got several negative uh, carriers in my cabinet. You just need to ask for one. Um, once you have it cut into strips, you'll slide the film in, and then you'll get the ability to, um, to see all of your film at one time. One of the benefits is that you can see which photos are um, in focus, which photos have the most uh, interest, um, one of our next projects after we have a roll of film is to create a contact sheet. A contact sheet um, will allow you to see which photos you like the best um, on a proof. And these little thumbnails um, are much easier to, uh, to make prints and edit than having to print every single frame. So our, our next step is going to be learning how to make a contact sheet.